We continue with the latest breaking news in Russia, where a military revolt against Russia's regime continues to escalate. The leader of that revolt, a mercenary leader, says his forces took Russia's southern headquarters without firing a shot. Joining me now again is Evelyn Farkas, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Russia, Ukraine, and Eurasia. So, Evelyn, thank you for coming back. Let's talk more about Yevgeny Prigozhin, the, the leader of the Wagner Group. Who is he? And how did we get to this point? Yeah, Jonathan, thanks for having me back. I mean, Yevgeny Prigozhin is a, is a guy who, as a young man, was put in prison and under the Soviet system for stealing. Um, he came out, you know, he served his time, he came out, he apparently ran a hot dog stand, got into catering, which led him through a, an introduction to Vladimir Putin into catering for the military. He started to build a business. Um, one part of his business, we should not forget, was this huge disinformation troll farm, we called it, um, that, that was used to, frankly, you know, influence our elections in 2016. Um, and that continued all the way through. As far as I know, they're still active. Um, the Russians certainly are active. Then he started a mercenary organization, and this mercenary force is worldwide, uh, mostly focused on helping strong, strong armed leaders in Africa, but also, very importantly, uh, Prigozhin with his Wagner group got involved in Syria. Um, that was the only place where the U.S. military actually fought Russian forces in Syria. And then he was deployed to Ukraine for the latest phase of this bloody war that's going on there, until, of course, now, which it looks like he's withdrawn from Ukraine. And, and Evelyn, can you tell us um, about his vast wealth? Because he is a very wealthy yeah. man, from hot dog stand, hot dog vendor, to the leader of a mercenary group with seemingly deep pockets. Right. I mean, you can just imagine just one of these businesses. If you are, if you are the Sodexo, if you will, for the military, that in and of itself can make you a multimillionaire, if not a billionaire. And the Russian system is incredibly corrupt. So the government will pay whatever it will pay, and he will skim off whatever he wants to skim off. So long as Vladimir Putin's providing him with cover, he's fine. The mercenary um, business actually is probably the one where he made the most money, because there he's been employing his troops in places like Central African Republic, guarding mineral resources, taking diamonds, literally, um, as payment. And so he's become a billionaire in his own right. And that, as you mentioned earlier, Jonathan, makes him, you know, a rival to Vladimir Putin. Now, mm -hmm. Vladimir Putin controls the intelligence uh, security forces in, in the Russian military and in, in Russia writ large. The um, incredible, uh, you know, um, I mean, they are not, not without their flaws, but that is a very strong establishment. He's got National Guard forces that he established, frankly, to make sure that he and the Kremlin have a loyal force outside of the military. So he has a lot, Vladimir Putin has a lot of forces on his side. But Prigozhin's forces are hardened. They are loyal to him. They're angry. They feel that the military leadership has not provided them with sufficient ammunition and support. And so Prigozhin is going now, frankly, head to head with Vladimir Putin because he's now calling into question the premise upon which this war was initiated. And he's saying, frankly, that it's not going well, and it was maybe just something for the elite, you know, uh, Defense Minister Shoigu and the, and the Armed Forces Commander Garisimov, General Garisimov. Um, he's, he hasn't called out Vladimir Putin by name, but by calling into question this war, and again, the premise, the, 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 the rationale that Vladimir Putin gave to his people, which was that they were going to rescue the Ukrainians from a neo-Nazi, Western-controlled government. Uh, led, of course, by the Jewish president and Jewish prime minister in Ukraine. So an irony that's mm. not lost on those of us watching from the outside. But nevertheless, that was the rationale the Russians got, that they were going to save their Ukrainian brethren. Prigozhin has called that into question. He said this is elite engineered and it's not going well, and maybe we shouldn't have done it at all is some of the, what he's hinting at. Evelyn Farkas, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Russia, Ukraine, and Eurasia, thank you very much for coming back and bringing your expertise.